832, I'm calling this meeting to order. Uh, Commissioner Castaneda, if you don't mind doing our invitation, just briefly volunteer. Heavenly Father, we come to you today asking for your guidance, wisdom, and support. As we begin this meeting, help us engage in meaningful discussion, allow us to grow closer as a group, and nurture the bonds of this community. Thank you so much, Commissioner. All right, uh, Tamla, will you do roll call, please? Yes, sir. Chairman Vic Figaro. Here. Vice Chairman Tom Butler. Here. Dr. Ray Callis. Here. Dr. Gary Wesman. Commissioner Helen Collier. Here. Commissioner Nora Castaneda. Here. Take a motion to excuse the letter absent. So move. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, uh, Commissioner Butler, we are going to do the audit. So we're going to bump around, guys. I need you guys' patience. We're going to try to bump this around as much as possible. This virtual thing is not ideal, and hopefully it's not to be expected in the future. But we got to timeline this, so I'm going to bump around the agenda. Just stay with me. Um, item T on the audit, Mr. Butler. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. So uh, it is time to uh, to uh, pick a, an external auditor again. Um, the uh, department sent out 168 uh, RFP proposals to different uh, CPA firms in the state. Of those, uh, 93 of the 168 were uh, HUB. Uh, historically underutilized business vendors. Uh, of all 168 that were sent out, five came back. Of those five, one was a hub a vendor. Uh, utilizing the best value approach, uh, the agency has determined uh, to use, uh, or recommended that we use uh, Weaver in uh, Tidwell again as our CPAs. And so uh, the audit committee would move that the department authorized to in, is authorized to enter into a contract with Beaver and Tidwell uh, to provide internal auditing services. That's our motion, Mr. Chair. Okay, so there's a motion. Ms. Hamill, there's a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Any questions for Mr. Commissioner Butler? Yeah, this is uh, Commissioner Callier. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner Butler, for, for sharing the information and the number uh, that went out to 168. Can you tell me that with the uh, the one that you're uh, being recommended, um, do they have any hubs on their on their team or any proteges um, uh, identified? Commissioner Collier, I don't I don't have that information. Uh, okay. Great. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Butler. Is uh, Brian in the in the room or someone who could respond to that, Mr. I Chairman? Have, Mr. Kelly, I believe that Mike uh, Harris Mendes would be able to respond to that issue. Yes, Commissioners. Uh, Mike Harris Mendes, Deputy Executive Director. Uh, we're not aware of, of any hub vendors, subcontractors that Weaver has, or any mental protege program that they're involved in. That that was not part of the RFP that was presented out. Okay. If I may, Mr. Chair, I, you know, the, the department uh, is is ahead of the curve. Uh, currently, we utilize 34% uh, of our contractors for the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation, our hub vendors. Um, compare that to the statewide average uh, two years ago of 8% and uh, currently 10%. So we're three, th three and a half times, um, uh, I guess, uh, better than the average. So we, it is something that we, uh, you know, take seriously and try to implement every chance that we get. So uh, I'm proud to say that the agency uh, does that. And so uh, with that, uh, I, I guess I, uh, I'll leave it for the other commissioners. Okay. Yep. Any, other, any other comments? Yeah, uh, this is Commissioner Calvier, um, and, and thanks Commissioner Butler for noting that on the hub side, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm definitely full aware and, and have been, I believe, instrumental and in, in, uh, uh, with the focus on the hub, hub efforts. Uh, this is one of the largest uh, procurements for for the agency and i uh, would like to have thought that there would be some hub participation and or either protege for for this effort um i hear that there are none so um uh, we can uh, proceed on any other com comments good commissioners 
All right, I got a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. All right, we're going to go to uh, executive session, which is item F on our agenda. Uh, Brad, how much time do we need? Uh, Mr. Chairman, this is Brad Bowman. We'll, we'll try to be very quick, uh, at least for our, for our part of it. Uh, 20 minutes? 15. 20 minutes at most. All right. We'll now go into executive session to consult with our attorney under section 551.071, section 1, and 551.071, section 2, government code, and to discuss personal matters under section 551.074. The time is 8.37. After executive session, we'll take a break and come back, and let's give ourselves uh, 9 o'clock to pick up any action on the executive session and to begin with the contested cases.
Hi, commissioners. Uh, we need to be able to see y'all. Mr. Tiger, you there? Mr. Tiger. There you are. Okay. Thank you. Um, all right. So we uh, a quick reminder, just a few quick reminders. Make sure your camera is turned on the entire time. Mute, mute your microphone when you're not speaking. Please raise your hand if you would like to be recognized to speak and say your name before you speak. That's such an important part now. And if I don't see you, I apologize. Wave and keep waving. I'll try to get to you as possible. As soon as possible. We'll call the meeting back to order. We're back in open session. The time is 9.06. Um, I need to get a motion to accept electronic signatures, if you don't mind. Commissioner Callier, I make a motion to accept electronic signatures. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Uh, item I, the minutes. You guys are given the minutes to look at. Any comments or a motion? Uh, no comments on my <laughs> end. Uh, second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Record. All right. Now we're on to item J, the contested cases. First, before we do this, I want to tell you guys, Commissioner, the staff here has done an outstanding job of juggling this. Tam, thank you so much, Christine. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for what you do. Brian has watched. He's done a good job just watching it all play out. But, but the staff beyond Brian has done an amazing job. And so uh, as he's eye candy now, so we just kind of have to look at him and say, okay. So before we go into, I thought I'd just make that. So as we add these contested cases, just be patient with us. They might not come on straight on, so we'll get to do as best we can. And again, if you want to hear from a respondent, I will slow it down as slow as we can. So I want to make sure you guys get as much information as you can to make the best judgment. All right. Contested cases. If anyone has indicated that they are appearing today for a case, staff will provide with them information on how to connect to this meeting. We'll bring them into the meeting when we announce the case. We'll hear from the respondent. Okay, so I need to, I guess the first one's going to be uh, Jesus Perez, right, correct, Cam? Yes, sir. Is he on the line? Mr. Perez is not there. Natalie, you on? Yes, sir. Can you hear? Yes, I'm here. Okay, all right. I'm going to go ahead and let you, uh, you got the floor. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Natalie Olvera, and I'm a prosecutor in the Enforcement Division. This case resulted from a consumer complaint of an unlicensed electrician who performed electrical work inside the consumer's home. During the investigation and at the SOA hearing, respondent admitted he performed non-exempt electrical work at the consumer's home, and additionally, he was not licensed, not licensed as an electrician. Specifically, respondent installed a light fixture to already existing wiring. The complainant homeowner testified she hired respondent to perform renovations in her house because respondent represented himself as a master electrician, <clears throat> which was disputed by the respondent. The homeowner observed respondent installing a light fixture in her bathroom and stated she had to hire another person to complete the contracted job. <clears throat> Additionally, the department's chief electrical inspector for electrical operations testified and stated replacing a light fixture is electrical work and such work carries inherent dangers. Selecting an improper fixture and or improper installation could cause a fire, injury, or even result in death. Also, a high penalty was necessary to deter unlicensed work and remove <coughs> excuse me, a profit motive from having unlicensed work performed. The ALJ concluded in the proposal for decision, respondent did offer and perform non-exempt electrical work without being appropriately licensed by the department. <clears throat> Excuse me. The ALJ recommended an administrative penalty of $2,000 and the department recommends you adopt the proposal for decision as written. Thank you, now. Any questions? Uh, this is uh, Commissioner Callier. Uh, Natalie, thank you for, uh, for sharing about this particular case here. Uh, was there any, uh, just want to confirm from what I read, was there any advertisement of an electrical contractor or master electrician or, or anything? Uh, there, was, there was 
uh, Commissioner, there was the advertisement that the consumer, uh, she said that she got his name, um, that he had advertised himself as a master electrician. Um, so she said that's how she came upon hiring him. Um, he did dispute that at the hearing, um, but the consumer was very, um, you know, very, uh, that he did um, represent himself as a master electrician. Okay. All right. And, but but the uh, the staff, you guys did not have any actual evidence of that. No evidence was shown for that. Any proof? We don't have any paper or. Okay. Paper. Okay. Thank you. Um, I mean, for the other commissioners, so you got uh, don't have any comments. I can make a motion. Any, any other comments? All right, Commissioner Cowan. I, I move that we adopt the uh, PFD as written. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Motion carries. All right. Thank you, Nelly. Thank you. Uh, we're going to go on to case number two. Uh, Jessica, you you on? You have that? Yes. Cam, do we have somebody online? Mr. Don's on the line. Don. Call in user. Hoi Dong. Mr. Don, are you on? Can you hear me? Mr. Don. <laughs> Like he's redoing the meeting. Okay. Just can you hear me? I can. All right, good. Can you hear me? I have doubts in my day these days. <laughs> Mr. Don? I don't see him, so I'm just. Mr. Don? Yes. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Thank you. Okay, this is Chairman Figueroa. You have the commissioners uh, on the line with you, so uh, I'm going to read you some instructions. I just need you to make sure that you can understand the instructions I'm reading to you, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll, first, we'll hear from the prosecutor first, then you, Mr. Don, will have the opportunity to speak. Make sure you speak clearly, <laughs> say your name and who you represent. Each side will have five minutes to speak, up to three minutes for rebuttal if needed. Please understand the commission can only consider information that is in the recorded form when the case was heard at SOA. So please don't add any other information else outside of what was in the case. So okay. you can limit your comments to those matters that were presented in the SOA hearing. Mr. Dong, do you understand me? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Ms. Jessica, go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Chairman and Commissioners. My name is Jessica Hurtado. I'm a prosecutor in the Enforcement Division. The ALJ recommends that you revoke Hoi Duong's cosmetology manicurist license, and I ask that you adopt the PFD as written. Beginning in June 2008 through April 2012, respondent was convicted of three separate misdemeanor assault, family violence offenses, and one misdemeanor terroristic threat offense. Despite his criminal history, the department took a chance on the respondent and granted his application for a cosmetology manicurist license in 2014. Then during a four month period in 2017, respondent engaged in a pattern of threats and harassment against the complaining victim. On one occasion, respondent was attending a party at another person's home where the victim was also present. Respondent brandished a butcher knife at the victim while threatening to kill him and his family. Subsequently, respondent went to the victim's nail salon and began pounding on the doors and again threatened to kill the victim and his family. Finally, on the third occasion, respondent returned to the nail salon and threatened to kill the victim. As a result of these actions, in January 2019, respondent pled guilty to and was placed on deferred adjudication for stalking a felony offense. Respondent was placed on community supervision for 10 years until January 2029. In November 2020, respondent filed a late renewal application and answered no to the criminal history question. Relying on his false answer, the department renewed respondent's license. At the hearing, respondent initially testified that because English is not his first language, he misunderstood the question. However, he acknowledged that the renewal application also included the question translated into his first language but stated that he is an honest person and did not intend to lie. 
The ALJ determined that stalking qualifies as a guideline crime against a person and that respondent's offense was particularly concerning because the offense occurred partially at a nail salon and the victim was another salon owner. The ALJ notes that stalking is a serious felony that involved brandishing a weapon and threatening the victim at his place of work. Additionally, respondent's felony stalking offense is a concerning escalation from his past misdemeanor assaultive and threatening offenses. Respondent was 44 years old at the time of the stalking offense, and therefore this was not a mere act of youthful indiscretion. Because respondent did not respond to the department's request for information, there was no evidence available to determine whether the respondent is in compliance with the terms of his supervision. Finally, the ALJ notes that the respondent offered no explanation for his actions, offered no evidence of rehabilitation, offered no letters of recommendation to support his fitness for licensure. Therefore, the ALJ concludes that respondent's deferred adjudication may be considered as a conviction for licensing purposes, and that the evidence does not establish that respondent is currently fit to hold a license. The ALJ ultimately found respondent's explanation of a purported language barrier to be unpersuasive and concluded that he knowingly falsified his answer to the criminal history question on his renewal application. The ALJ recommends that you revoke respondent's cosmetology manicurist license. I ask that you adopt the PFD as written, and I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Justice. Any questions, Commissioner? Mr. Dong, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. You, you have five minutes to respond. You have the floor, sir. Go ahead. Yes, everything I, I bought is correct. I'm sorry. Okay, so my question is, so uh, what, uh, what they gonna do to my license? Well, Mr. John, they're, they're gonna revoke your license is what they're gonna do. And deny you that license. Oh, that, that's the, so, so are you, uh, listen, are you, we're here to see it where we have made a mistake or you wanna contest a certain point that was in the SOA hearing. So that you don't get that, so the license does not get revoked. Do you understand, Mr. Don? <coughs> yes, yes, sir. <coughs> okay, is there any comments that you have, sir? So when uh, when when they will uh, revoke my license? Uh, Mr. Chairman, um, uh, this is Commissioner Callier. Uh, just out of res respect of someone with a different language, first language, is there an interpreter? Well, hang on, Commissioner Callier, if you don't mind, just give me a second. Mr. Dong, yes. Can you understand what I'm saying? I don't. I don't uh, the clearly understand. You know. Okay, Brad. What do you want? You want to defer this, or we, we did we have a problem like this before? Uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, it's uh, Brad Bowman. We we don't have a interpreter lined up for today. Uh, was there Jessica? Was there a, a interpreter at the hearing? So hearing. He never asked for one, and we didn't have an interpreter at the hearing. You never asked for an interpreter? No, and we did not have one. Okay. Um, um, what doesn't you understand? I'm you, sorry. You, what, Commissioner? What don't you understand, Mr. Hon Mr. Donald? I don't understand, you know, like uh, on about the, 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 the my license revoked. So on why when, it's being revoked? Okay. No, I, so I, I asked like when, when, uh, the, when, they will when revoke my license. When will it be? When will it be revoked? I believe there's a period of time after the final order that he has to file a motion for a rehearing. And at some point, the final order that he has to file a motion for a rehearing. And at some point, maybe Brad knows. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Chair, can I, can I yes, uh, go ahead. Uh, add, add to that? That's correct. Um, if the commission <clears throat> votes today to adopt the PFD and revoke the license, then uh, he, uh, Mr. Dong has a period of time, it's 25 days, to uh, essentially appeal that by filing a motion for rehearing. So the order's not final, revocation doesn't actually take effect until that period ends if he doesn't file a motion for hearing. Or if he does file a motion for hearing, then it's uh, when the commission acts on the motion for hearing and denies it, then the revocation takes effect. And so there's can a little- still practice, practice or? 
he would still have a license, uh, a valid license up until, assuming he's done everything renewed and whatever he needs to do with his license. But, but the case would not prevent him from, from practicing while that uh, process uh, plays out. Uh, and that's up to 100 days after your, after the commission's order uh, that the motion is here. So that's kind of the outside time frame okay. that we're looking at. So do we have an in-house Vietnamese interpreter? Do we have somebody that can we have you? someone. I don't know if we can can have someone. Brian, do we have one today? We're looking into it right now, Mr. Chairman. See if we can get somebody here. Okay. Do, do you, Mr. Right, Mr. Chairman, get, get, pass, get, 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 hang on, hang on, stand down. Well, I think we're all going. Yeah, I think I'm going to wait until we get somebody to walk in through and make sure he's clear as what what he's walking into. If you don't mind, and then we'll just so we'll just we'll hold off on this. Mr. Dog, can you hear me? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, I'm going to defer to the side of caution on this one. So what we're going to do uh -huh. is we're going to wait and make sure that somebody on our staff is able to get you an interpreter to make sure you understand what your rights are and what your the next steps are for this uh, for your license and what the possibilities of revocation are. Does that make sense to you? Yes. It, that does make sense to you, sir. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, so somebody I, on our so staff will get with you. Somebody on our staff will get with you. Is that possible, Brett? Brian. Okay. We'll get back with okay. you and when we'll we'll, we'll let us get All right, Tam? All right. Thank you, Mr. Dong. Thank you so much. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I just want to go on record saying that after uh our uh, legal counsel read the finding of the PFD. He said on his statement, he understood that completely and he agreed with what she said. So what you've already moved on. I was going to go a different direction, but thank you, sir. I just want to make it very clear that he understood whenever uh, Artado was reading the PFD. I agree with you. I, I appreciate that, Dr. Collins, but I, I'm just going to err on the side of caution though, just for that, but just to make sure that we are, but I understand what your point and I can't. Well, and then I want to make another point. If we know that we have someone that doesn't speak English, we should have this already in line so we don't have to delay people that are going in front of us whenever they could be a danger to some Texans. That's all I'm going to say. No, I understand, Dr. Callis. Do you yeah. have any comments? Yeah, this is Commissioner Callier, um, and, and I concur with uh, Dr. Callis' uh, last, uh, last statement that's right on. I, I did not... I did not discern or hear that he said that he agreed. So that was a miss on, on my side. So thank you for that. But I think the right thing to do is is definitely, you know, you know, should have had an interpreter here. So thank you. Uh, Mr. Castaneda, they didn't ask for one. So do we not make the assumption that they're understanding? Right. That was my assumption, right. Commissioner, because at the hearing he never made it um he never made any kind of request like right. that. Okay, thank you for that. We, we can, I, I moved on. So, Ms. Dong, thank you. you well, you'll be heard here from our staff. Tam, let's go to the next case. Uh, uh, so, 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 so now I, Ms. Dong, somebody will get with you on, on our staff. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number three, which is Jennifer Holland back. Jessica, go ahead. We have an attorney, Mr. Holland. <laughs> We have an interpreter. We have an attorney. She has attorney. an attorney. Okay, attorney. Same thing. <laughs> Just legal interpretation. <laughs> legal interpretation. Mr. Hollenbeck. Mr. back? I'm sorry. The respondent's name. Okay, I'm sorry. Who's the, who's the attorney? Can we continue to? Maglier. I can't read that. Mr. Mackey. Yes, I'm present. Mr. Mackey, Mr. Chairman Figueroa, how are you, sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? Good. I'm going to read you some instructions and then uh, we'll proceed from there, okay? Yes, sir. We'll hear from the prosecutor first and we'll hear from you. You have an opportunity to speak. Make sure you speak clearly. Say your name and who you represent. Each side will have five minutes to speak. Then you'll have three minutes for rebuttal if needed. Please understand that the commission can only consider information that's in the record from when the case was heard at SOA. And you must limit your comments to those that were presented at the SOA hearing. Do you understand me, Mr. McLeay? Yes, sir. Perfect. Mr. Hurtado, go ahead. Thank you. Jessica Hurtado, Enforcement Division. 
I ask that you adopt the PFD as written and revoke Jennifer Hollenbeck's massage therapist license as required by law. This case was decided without holding a hearing based on the department's motion for summary disposition. Ms. Hollenbeck was represented by counsel who filed a response to the department's motion on her behalf. After reviewing the arguments of both parties, the ALJ determined that there was no genuine issue as to any material fact in this case, and that the department was entitled to a decision in its favor as a matter of law. The ALJ issued a PFD recommending revocation of respondent's license. Respondent's counsel filed no exceptions to that PFD. In May 2000, the Department of State Health Services issued respondent a massage therapist license. <clears throat> then, in 2001, respondent pled no contest to the offense of public lewdness. The court placed respondent on deferred adjudication community supervision for six months. Respondent continued to renew her license with DSHS until the program transferred to the department in 2017. In April 2020, a respondent applied to renew her license and the department learned of her prior deferred adjudication for public lewdness. Based on this information, the department sought revocation of respondent's license. This case involves the mandatory license revocation provisions in the massage statutes that have been considered in previous cases before the commission. Those statutes state that an individual is ineligible to receive a license and any license they hold must be revoked if they enter a no contest plea to or if they receive a deferred adjudication for a sexual offense. The elements of public lewdness include knowingly engaging in an act of sexual intercourse or sexual conduct in a public place or in the presence of another who will be offended or alarmed by that contact con conduct. The ALJ determined that public lewdness is a sexual offense and it requires license revocation. Like in the Miranda Bloom case, which also involved a public lewdness offense, the respondent's license must be revoked. Respondent pled no contest to and received deferred, deferred adjudication for a sexual offense and the law leaves you no discretion in this case. I ask that you continue your consistent application of the massage laws in this case and adopt the PFD as written. I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you. Any questions for Jessica? All right. Mr. McAuley, you have the floor. Five minutes. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Thank you, Commissioner. I respectfully disagree with Ms. Uh, Hurtado, and I believe the judge erred in this case. My client, Ms. Hollenbeck, was issued a massage license back on May 2nd, 2000, under the applicable law of September 1st, 1999, by the 76th legislature of the state of Texas. She got into a plea of no low contendere until January 23rd, 2001. Thereafter, she renewed her license every year, which the state agreed and accepted until it went to every other year in the late 2000s, I think after 2015. Under the applicable law, in effect, in 1999, she was she was clean. She was good. She had a license. Thereafter, she renewed every year, and the license was accepted by the state. The state relies on statutes in 2005, 2017, and just recently, 2021, which are inapplicable and not retroactive. Now, from a more practical standpoint, we're talking about Ms. Hollenbeck was issued her license back on May 2nd, 2000. You know, low contendere was seven months later, January 2001. She has been a massage therapist, a high-end massage therapist for members of Bush's cabinet, the current administration, Dallas Stars, and other pro athletes. She's had a very squeaky clean record since her unfortunate mishap, which at the time she had a lawyer, but no money to fight the charge. Quite frankly, she was an adult server at a men's gentleman club. That's what happened. On a more practical standpoint, in the state of Texas, 
if you're trying to discredit someone in a jury trial, if you have a conviction for a felony, that is not admissible if it's over 10 years old. Here we're talking about, talking about an alleged misdeed 20 years ago. But under the current laws, 2005, 2017, and 2021, those are inapplicable. The law in question is the 1999 law enacted by the legislature. And at that time, Ms. Hollenbeck was rightfully granted a license. And she, if I may add to that. And, and if you may, I have my legislative consultant, Mr. Saunders, who's a lawyer also in the state of Texas. May he speak, Commissioner? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you very much. The, the, the analysis. Hey, state your name, sir, sir state, state your name and who you represent, please. My name is Robert Saunders. I'm co-counsel for Jennifer Allenbeck. Okay, go ahead. It, the issue at hand is from 1999, the first amendment to the stat occupations code, chapter 455, that's in question. There's two, there's two sections that's in question. From 99 to 2005, the name of the, the uh, section in question was registration, ineligibility for registration. In 2005, the Congress uh, changed that to in, uh, ineligibility uh, for licensure. So from 99 to 2005, she would have been ineligible for registration uh, uh, it, pursuant to pleading no contest and receiving deferred adjudication. However, as we pointed out, her registration and licensure predates that statute. And so the question is from 99 and, and in the judge's statements, it says that there, there's no doubt that she was uh, initially licensed correctly. And the real issue is, was does this change when the language changed from registration in 99 to uh, licensure license in 2005? The 2017 amendment also says license. The 2019 amendment says uh, license. And the most recent House Bill 757, which went into effect September 1st of this year, removed the automatic revocation. That has now been removed, which we have not discussed. So the pleading no contest and receiving deferred adjudication is now uh, permitted to be, of course, allow you to look at that, but the automatic revocation provision has been removed. But again, we just want to clarify that it was ineligibility for registration from 99 to 05. So if we can agree that from 99 to 05, uh, she had already pre-registered and been licensed before her plea of no contest, then from 99 to 2005, it's clear that her license was valid. In 2005, that language changed. However, the 2005 clause has a grandfather clause. And it says, when you read uh, the House bill, you can see that the section 35 mm -hmm. says that the change in the law from registration to license, and I'll read it to you. The changes in law made by this act with regards to the requirement for issuing a license under chapter 455 occupations of code apply only to applications filed with the Department of State Health Services on or after January 1st, 2006. So the 2005 change in the word life from uh, uh, registration to license, the House bill itself clearly says that this change is only applicable for massage license applications after January 1st, 2006. Mr. Chair, stand by. Uh, 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 just, just to note the, 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 I think we're at, at five minutes. You can allow. Yeah, it is. It is five. I, I got it. Go ahead. Go ahead. Did you ever? Did you have a comment on that, Brad? No, I was just pointing out the, the yeah. time. All right, gentlemen, your five minutes. Uh, Jessica, do you have any rebuttals to that? Chairman, briefly, if I may, um, the in the ineligibility statute in the massage law has been around prior to 2005. Um, the judge considered the arguments a council presented um, in their motion response, and she um, found that those arguments did not succeed. Now, if they're trying to bring in new arguments, I would, 
I would point out that those have not been considered by the judge, and so they should not be considered here, um, if that's what they're trying to do. Uh, also, as to the point that the automatic revocation provisions have been removed, that's um, completely inaccurate. I believe he may be referring to the five-year exception that was removed, but the bar uh, for a sexual offense still exists in the statute today. It still applies to Ms. Hollenbeck. And so, therefore, I ask that you adopt the PFP. Do you have any, you have any other any comments for you got one minute? Yes, Commissioner, briefly, we're not making any new arguments at all. If you take a look at the response we filed on file with the commission, we argued these same arguments we're making today. Now, I understand the judge might have ruled against us, but I'm not going to, I mean, agree that just because the judge rules, they make the right decision. Judges, respectfully, in the state of Texas and elsewhere, do make wrong decisions. In this case, Ms. Hollenbeck was rightfully, legally licensed in, back in 2000. The plea was not until January 23rd, 2001. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Uh, commissioners, I'm sure you have some questions. Go ahead. Uh, no questions on my side, Mr. Chairman. All right. No. All right, Callis, do you have a question? No, I got it. I'm I'm uh, ready to vote or ready for a motion. All right. Norm? Okay. Good. Tom? It's a lot of um, different case presidents. If you got questions, it's time to ask. Yeah, I, I do have a couple of questions. Um, uh, uh, Jessica, you, you mentioned that this was a guideline offense. Uh, there are no... Um, uh, is there any leniency with regard to time frames uh, with regard to what we can do here? The way the statute is currently, there's no time frame. So there's no, um, no, that does not exist in the statute as it's written right now. Mr. Chair, this is one of the frustrating things. I, th I think we've spoken about this um, in the past. You know, uh, this this lady by all, uh, you know, uh, um, it, it seems by all acclaim, this has been 20 years in the past and, and here she's been working for a long time. And, and I know I'm venting to the choir here, but um, this is one where, you know, she she's she seems to have led an exemplary life for a good long time. And now we're tasked with taking uh, her livelihood away. It, it doesn't sit well with me. Uh, it's frustrating to me. You know, I think part of our task is to represent the, the interests of those Texans with little power. And here we are bringing the whole state down upon her. And so it's frustrating. I understand. I, I, there's no kind of more. Brad, I, I, I hear the commissioners. I just want to confirm with you. There is no wiggle room on this. One. This is in our, in your, in our council. That's what you're telling us. Um, Mr. Chairman, the, I think the department's interpretation of the statute has, has been very clear throughout this that, that there's no discretion for the commission to do anything other than revoke the license in this uh, scenario. I mean, you've heard arguments from council, and you can obviously take those into account, but that's that's been the, the staff's um, position. Okay. All right. Mr. Chair, Chair, comments? Yeah, I got another comment. Um, uh, Commissioner Dr. Callis, um, I, I'm going to go on record again, like I always do every time I hear one of these cases. Um, that's like, uh, it, it's, it's totally makes no sense that we have no recourse based on uh, an interpretation by our legal counsel when we know for a fact as commissioners and the duty uh, as, as bestowed upon us is to represent the state. How can you think that we're a forgiving state if you cannot forgive someone from 20 years ago. Um, I would like to see something done. Um, I, I, I know that I can't go against the PFD because uh, uh, based on interpretation, but I have a hard time voting for something that I don't believe in. So I want to go on record saying that this is this needs to be corrected, and I promise after I get off the phone today, I'm calling Senator Creighton, and I'm talking to a lot of legislators because this is wrong. 
This is um, Mr. Chairman, Commissioner Callier as well. Uh, obviously, I've voiced my my opinions on uh, on prior scenarios, and um, I have to echo with uh, Vice Chair Butler as well as the Commissioner uh, Callis that um, that that w w there needs to be a change. Um, I, I clearly uh, commend uh, this particular uh, licensee that she's done um, uh, from what I've read. Um, you know, outstanding work. Some of the clients that I've men mentioned are uh, are uh, are tops, and um, uh, would definitely concur that that this is uh, at least for my for myself because I am you know definitely uh, you know pro making sure that what we're doing supports the economy of Texas. And right now, um, uh, this one does not uh, does not feel good. Um, I will be right behind Dr. Callis um, in making uh, phone calls to uh, to representatives as uh, as well. Thank you for that. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Wiggle room. Uh, nothing probation, nothing that we can do. Anything that can. I mean, I, I, I'm with the other two commissioners who feel that if they've loved, lived a good 20 years and this is way in the past, is there anything that can be done other than losing the license? Uh, Commissioner Castaneda, that's Brad Bowman. Uh, in most of the cases that come before you on criminal uh, history, criminal convictions, there are these factors that you look at. How long ago was the offense and mitigating, mitigating factors like rehabilitative efforts and things like that. With this statute, it's not, it's not like that. It's just a clear uh, person is not eligible for a license if they have this kind of, of conviction. And so there are no grandfather clauses when they're talking about the two that the time frame. I, I'm not aware of any 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 uh, wiggle room, as you say, or, or any uh, any ways to to, to get around uh, that. Um, ultimately, this is the commission's decision, and you you know you know what our view of it is from a legal standpoint, and you've heard the arguments of counsel. Uh, I know it's uh, a, a, a difficult one. Good. Commissioner, may I say one thing, because I disagree that it's an outright revocation. May I cite the statute from uh, 1999. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Yes. Hang on, go ahead. 455.251A1 states the commission or executive director may refuse to issue a license to a person and shall suspend, revoke, or refuse to renew the license of a person or shall reprimand a person, blah, blah, blah. Now here, the commission, or the, respectfully, the court has the authority to reprimand a person. That's 455.251A1. Okay. Commit, I know Commissioner Butler, you have Commissioner, yes, sir. Thank, your thank vote you. Is your vote. Hang on a second, Mr. Thompson. Excuse me. Your vote is your vote. So how you vote is your vote. So I want to make that as clear as possible to you. I'll say one more time. Your vote is your vote. So sure. uh, go ahead, Commissioner Butler. Uh, yes, uh, I'd like to address Brad. Brad, what would happen if we uh, voted to not accept the PFD here? Well, I guess uh, the, um, if you took no action, then the the case would just be, be pending until you did take an action. I'm not, I'm not sure if that's what you what you mean, um, Commissioner Butler, uh, Vice Chair Butler. But um, yeah. So they, so if if we took if we took no action, it would just be pending until the legislature decided to do something. And she could she could work, and so you know I, that's almost less onerous to me than. Hey, hang on, Commissioner. He, he, Brad had something else to say. Just give me a second. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Brad. Well, I, I that's correct. I'm assuming that she has done everything yeah. on the licensing end, renewed, you know, filed a timely renewal, and all the things she needs to do on the licensing end. The the license would not be affected by this case until you make your decision, and that becomes final. Um, so, um, so you mocked all this? Is that what you're saying? I, I'm, Mr. Chairman. I want to be clear. I'm not recommending that you do that. I'm not suggesting that you do that. I'm not I understood. That. That's to, clear. to the question. Right, and that, that's that's a duty on us, Tom. So you just, 
Mr. Chair, I have a question before Tom, uh, before Commissioner Butler uh, brings this motion. Uh, this is Dr. Callis again. Uh, can I ask uh, Brad or you, Mr. Chair? Uh, this is 2021, getting ready to be 2022. Did this licensee renew her license within the last, say, three to four years? Uh, how often do they have to renew their license? Oh, it's every two years. Every two years. Uh, okay, I, you're breaking my point. So two years ago, she had this problem more than two years for the last 18 to 20 years. How did we allow her to get a license then? And now we're not giving her license today. I mean, it makes no sense at all. Sure. So with that being said, I'll let Commissioner Butler do what he needs to do, but I am definitely not supporting this PFD. So I, I think, um, and one of the things that uh, a little bit of history, uh, Commissioner Callis is, we received these, these uh, healthcare licenses from the Department of Health and Human Services uh, because because these issues, the legislature thought that too many people were falling through the cracks. They thought we could do a, a, a more efficient job of catching them. So we are catching them and they were right. We will catch them. But the problem is uh, we get a lot of good people caught in that web. So if, right. if, if there were ever a case to, to say, let's put this one on hold, this may be it. Um, so um, stand by. Stand by, Tom. I know we're just give me a second here, because um, yes, sir. Going a little different water, sir. Um, when did when did when did we take over? What year was that, Brad? Right, November one, two thousand seventeen. Two thousand seventeen. Okay, so that that's the More point. Two years, sir. That's why I was checking to make sure. Exactly. So, okay, so I know where you guys are going. Just be aware of where you're going against council here. So I want you guys to all be aware of that. As we move forward, but go ahead, Tom. And before you make that motion that you're fixing to make, any other comments? Mr. Chairman, Brian Francis, it, it seems like the commissioners are exploring a couple of options. One is to take no action at all, as Brad had talked about, and that would leave the issue pending. Uh, one is to take an action that is uh, counter to the PFD. And arriving at a different decision, right. and I think those have and, and implications to accept the PFD as or or as the it. third is accepted. now. Now remember, commissioners, this isn't the last stop. They have other they have their means once they get beyond us in court. Is that accurate, Brad? Correct. Uh, they uh, if you if the commission adopted the PFD, said, uh, revoked the license, the next step would be to file a motion for rehearing to come back before you. If you denied that, then it would go to their next step would be to go to district court and have the matter presented right. at that level. Okay, uh, so, uh, Mr. Chairman, can we make a motion to table this uh, uh, contested case until a time certain? Can we do that, right? Well, I don't know why we couldn't. We're in a meeting, and that's parliamentarily correct. That is within your. Do you mean a time certain to? Later in the meeting, or, or no, no, you have to. Uh, I know what I was going to say, but I'm just saying, me being a parliamentarian, I'm saying that I'm I'm using maneuvers to where I'm not going against a PFD. I'm respecting this case, letting us have some time to think about it, not making th them jump through some more hoops. Because I do respect what uh, Vice Chairman Butler said that we do have a big net and we're catching bad actors, but this actor needs to be let go and let her perform the duly license that she deserves. And that's what I'm, I'm trying to make happen. So I would like to table this to uh, a future meeting and, and, and that way there's no time certain, but I would like to uh, uh, go on, uh, put a motion out that we will table this rehearing. Okay, you want to make a motion to table over here? Yes. Move the motion to table over here. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, Brian Francis. Uh, Commissioner Callis, I understand where you're going. Just recognize that you have the Administrative Procedures Act that is also in play with uh, Rogers, right. um, rules of order. So I think that's what Brad is kind of working through in his mind. And I think giving our general counsel's office some time in this meeting to um, really reflect on what the options are that the commission can consider and what the ramifications of each of those options are. 
Um, and so maybe tabling it for a further conversation in this meeting would allow Brad to come back and really lay out, his team lay out um, the, uh, the path or the pathways. I, I, I respect that, Brian, but I think that, that Brad is, we, we're gonna, the words are gonna be re-uttered again. And I don't know if the law, well, to that point, right? So I think the past, Brad, as I understand, were three, right? One, accept a PFD, right? Let the flow of course happen. Go back to motions for rehearing in the district court. Two, deny the PFD, right? That's going against counsel, right? Three, is not take a vote. Is that, what you're, is that accurate? Uh, three or uh, Bert, what uh, Dr. Callis was suggesting of tabling it to future to future, Which is future meeting until we get. I guess. The reason why I was trying to do that, Chairman, is so that way we are not on record on taking a vote on this case. I want people to take a vote on tabling. Right. I got you. I got you. Okay. Um, you okay with that, Brad? Uh, well, let me say this. That's a valid motion, the motion to table. And so, um, I mean, I'm not opining on on, on on that or not, right. but you have the authority okay. to do that or discretion. So let me, let me get the, we'll, 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 work, we'll work this, we'll see how this plays out. Council, uh, I think, I'm assuming you understand what, what we're trying to do here, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Dr. Callis, you got a motion to table this, uh, right? Correct. Is there a second? Second, Commissioner Callier. Second from Commissioner Callier. All right, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, thank you, Council. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll get back with you. Stay tuned. Okay, yes, sir. All yes. right. M Mr. Chair, uh, if uh, I hate to do this, but I have a flight to catch. So, um, um, thank you so much uh, for this meeting you. this morning. May I be excused, right. hey, Commissioner? You're paid to be doc. Don't worry, Commissioner. Thank Butler. you. <laughs> thank All you. Right. God bless everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Yes. The attorney is asking if he can be. Yes, asked. here's the counselor. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. Item four. Jessica, uh, do we have Ms. Lynn on the line, Pam? No, sir. All right, Jessica, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Jessica Hurtado, Enforcement Division. The ALJ recommended granting Cody Lynn a, re a restricted apprentice electrician license. After reviewing the PFD, I notified the applicant that if he was interested in pursuing a restricted license, he should provide the department with the name and contact information of another licensee who is willing to supervise him. After the department ensured that the proposed supervisor was appropriate and the parties agreed to the restrictions prov uh, provided by the department, a restricted license agreement was signed and the department issued a restricted apprentice electrician license to the applicant. Because an agreement has been reached between the parties, I ask that you dismiss this pending PFD and I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you. All right. First of all, this is a win. After that arduous conversation, this is a win for the department. I want to congratulate the house and what we did and get this done. So, uh, and I have asked count, uh, commissioner, I've asked the staff to keep track of the, as these licenses issued so that we can report back to legislature on this. So with that, I'll entertain a motion for dismissal. So Commissioner Callier, um, I, I do have a comment before making my, my, my motion uh, is that I believe the, the supervisor is uh, Mr. Ford. Is that correct, Jessica? I believe so, yes. Uh, so uh, that, that speaks volumes for, for Mr. Ford and the commitment that's made. Uh, I'm not sure if they're listening, but it speaks volumes uh, for the commitment uh, for, for this particular effort. I do make a, a motion to, to uh, dismiss, dismiss. So moved. Is there a second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, item number five, just in case Mr. Roach is. Is he here or Pam? No, sir. Okay, Jessica, go ahead. Thank you, Chairman. Jessica Hurtado, Enforcement Division. The ALJ recommends that you deny Todd Roach's application for a consent tow operator license, and I ask that you adopt the PFD as written. The applicant has been convicted of five serious felonies. In 2003, he was convicted of burglary of a habitation and theft over $1,500. He received five years community supervision. 
In 2010, he was convicted of unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon. And the court suspended his prison sentence and placed him on community supervision for eight years. Then in 2018, his supervision was revoked and he was sentenced to four years in prison. In 2018, the applicant was also convicted of a second unlawful possession of a firearm by a felon and a second burglary of a building offense. The applicant entered a building without the consent of the owner and in an attempt to steal sports memorabilia and furniture. The applicant was sentenced to four years in prison and he was released on March 2nd, 2020. He is scheduled to remain on parole until June 2022. At the hearing, the applicant testified that while in prison, he completed a 12-step program and he's no longer under the influence of drugs and no longer associates with the people. The guidelines for tow truck operators include crimes against property, as well as crimes involving the receipt, sale, or other distribution of illegal goods, including illegal weapons. The ALJ relied on the common meaning of the word illegal to conclude that because the applicant was prohibited by law from possessing a firearm, that firearm was an illegal weapon at the time of his offenses. In order to have been in possession of a firearm, the applicant had to have received this weapon, and thus the applicant's illegal possession of a firearm offense were guideline crimes. Turning to the Chapter 53 factors, the ALJ recognizes that the applicant is attempting to establish his fitness for licensure. Specifically, the ALJ notes that the applicant has made rehabilitative efforts and is in compliance with the conditions of his parole. However, weighing against the applicant is his extensive criminal history, five felony convictions spanning a 16-year period. The applicant was 34 years old at the time of his most recent burglary, and, he, and this cannot be considered a mere youthful indiscretion. Finally, the applicant was released from prison approximately 18 months ago, and therefore has not su had sufficient time to establish a record of good conduct. Therefore, the ALJ found that the factors weigh against the applicant at this time and recommends that you deny Mr. Roach's application for a consent tow operator license. I ask that you adopt the PFD as written, and I will answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions? All right, motion. Yeah, I got a motion. Um, adopt the PFD as written and use our electronic signature, please. Commissioner Cowan, your seconds. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Motion carries. Uh, number, item number six <clears throat> Hardings. Mr. Harding. Not here. Cam, correct? No, sir. Okay, go ahead, Jessica. Thank you. Jessica Hurtado, Enforcement <laughs> Division. At the Commission's August 2021 meeting, the Department sought revocation of Sonny G. Harding's Incident Management Tow Operator License based on his criminal history. The Commission voted to suspend the respondent's license and probate that suspension with the condition the respondent be subject to random drug testing during the course of his probation. The Commission remanded this case back to enforcement to reach a an agreement with the respondent. On November 30th, an agreed order was signed, which suspended the respondent's license for a period of two years. That suspension is probated so long as the respondent complies with the terms of the agreement, including being subject to a random drug testing at his own expense. Respondent must provide the results of each test to the department within 72 hours of being notified a test is required. If the respondent fails to comply with any of these terms, his license will be fully suspended. And because the parties have reached an agreement, I ask that you dismiss this PFD and I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you. Okay. Any questions? How long is he testing? It's uh, random, so it will just depend on um, the luck of the draw. <laughs> And this is a Commissioner Callier. Um, for the drug testing, is that um, what do you call it, with, with hair or just kind of walk me through what that entails? Yes, it's a DOT, um, I believe, five panel urine drug test. So it's, it's a test that's required by the Department of uh, Transportation for, uh, for commercial truck drivers. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner Callier, move to uh, what? Are, what are we doing here? Forgive me. 
Thank you so much. Uh, dismissing this uh, based on the agreement that's in place. Second. So moved. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion, or motion carries. Uh, Mr. Mr. Serrano, number seven. Tam, nobody. Okay. okay, Jessica. Thank you, Commissioners, Chairman. Jessica Hurtado, Enforcement Division. In November, on November 5th, 2019, Miguel Soriano applied for an apprentice electrician license. After a hearing at SOA, the Commission initially heard this case at the August 2021 meeting. The Commission remanded this case back to enforcement to determine whether a restricted license was feasible for the applicant. The applicant provided an appropriate supervisor and the department and applicant agreed on the restrictions. And on November 9, 2021, the restricted license agreement was signed and the department issued a restricted apprentice license to the applicant. And because an agreement has been reached between the parties, I ask that you dismiss the pending PFD and I'm available to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jessica. By the way, the way you guys have embraced this is exceptional. Thank you so much. You, you took something and you 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 made it what it is. Legislation can only create it. You guys are actually using it. So thank you for that. Any questions? I'll take a motion for dismissal. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Callis, Commissioner Callis, make a motion for dismissal. Commissioner Cal, your seconds. All in favor, say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? We're going to take a five minute break. We got some callers we need to identify. So it's 10 02. Uh, we'll reconvene at 10 07. Uh, well, actually, we'll give ourselves sort of a 10 minute break. 10 12. Our, we need our staff to get back together. We want to have some opportunities to address a prior case. Okay? So 10 12, we'll come back.
you ready? Okay. All right, time is 10-16. Call the meeting back to order. Uh, commissioners, we're going to go back to contested cases with Mr. Dunn, uh, number two. Uh, Mr. Dunn, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Okay. Uh, Mr. Pham, can you hear me? Mr. Pham. Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. By the way, extraordinary job, staffers. I'm going to get you guys to work on uh, War Hunger, if you don't mind. I'd like that done by 2 o'clock, if you don't mind. 2 o'clock, War Hunger. Uh, all right, Mr. Pham, I need you to explain to Mr. Dung that we basically what we're doing is we're going to revoke his license. He went through a SOA hearing, okay? Right. And so basically, Mr. Tata went through her, her case. If he has any comments on why we should revoke this license, this is the time to bring it up, and that he can only comment on what was presented at the SOA case. Can you do that for me, Mr. Pam? Sure. Yes. Mr. Uh, Chairman, uh, yes. can we have uh, Brad Bowman? Can we have uh, Andy identify just for the record his name and title? And okay, Andy, can you identify your name, full name, and title, please, before you speak? My name is Andy Pham, uh, in, uh, enforcement investigator. And also you later. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Pam. Hello, uh Anton. Hello? Yes. Yeah, I'm Gan. Uh I'm uh the department nó đang uh nó, nó muốn revoke nó muốn uh nó, nó muốn lấy cái bằng của anh lại đó. Thì và tại vì có nhờ, có nhiều cái vấn đề đó, thì anh có uh, Anh có muốn giải thích gì không thì anh nói bây giờ anh nói đi. Không nếu mà cái chứ mà bây giờ mình sống là chỉ có trong cái nghề neo không mà bây giờ nó lấy license của mình thì làm sao mình đi làm? Mà cái license nó lấy là khoảng bao lâu? Um, cái này là ok để để hỏi. Commissioner, um, yes, respondent saying that. Uh, the uh, the the nail license that that's the only thing that he making a living now and if uh, the the department take it away and uh, how 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 he gonna survive and uh, if taking it away how long is it I mean he can get the license back okay how long before he gets license back if it's, taken, if it's revoked. Uh, there's a Mr. Chairman. There's a one-year bar on reapplying for the license, and after that one year, he he be eligible to reapply. Not a guarantee he would get the license back at that point, but he could reapply. Mr. Pham, can you explain that to Mr. Donald, please, and then we'll address the second issue. Okay. okay uh, say it again, please. Uh, explain him what. Huh? Uh, so, if the license is revoked, uh, he there is one year. Where he is not eligible to reapply. After the one year, he could reapply, but it's not a guarantee that he would get his license back at that at that. All right. He's eligible to reapply. Okay. And Tom? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, revoke là một một năm thì anh có thể uh, reapply. Anh anh có thể làm cái đơn xin cái cái bằng lại nhưng mà cái lúc đó nó thì nó cũng nó còn nó còn phải xét lại chứ không phải là nó có thể nó đưa cho anh lại ừ. rồi <cười> bắt đầu là hồi nào nó revoke cái license của mình ok commissioner uh, commissioner uh, respondent asking that uh, when we start to revoke his his license give me 25 days right if we do it now today, it'd be. It would be a uh, at least twenty five days before we go into effect, and up to a hundred days. And it depends on the motion for rehearing process and how that plays out. And I can go into more detail on that. But did you understand, Mr. Tram? Uh, I I understand uh, twenty five days from up to today. 100 days. Of up to 100 days, 25, it'll, it'll delay about 25 days, but up to 100 days, okay? And then he has the opportunity for a motion for rehearing after that. 
Can you explain that to him, please? Okay, you're breaking up. Uh, the 25 to 100 days? Yes. Okay. Possibility of delay. But after that, you'll have a motion opportunity for a motion for rehearing. All right. Okay. Uh, anh Thông ơi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, bắt từ từ hôm nay là 25 ngày cho đến 100 ngày. Okay, nó, nó có thể nó chậm nó có thể nó 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 hoãn lại uh, 100 ngày rồi uh, trong lúc đó anh có thể uh, có, nó có thể nó làm một cái 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 cái, cái một cái cuộc họp như như thế này nữa. Mr. Pham. Rồi. Yes sir. Okay, can you just let him know that is there any other comments that he has on why we should revoke his license? Okay. Anh có uh, anh có biết là tại sao mà department lấy cái license của anh lại không? Tại uh, theo mình nghĩ là cái như là cái lúc mà renew á, renew cái license rồi trong cái cái form mình không có coi kỹ đó. Rồi tới cái vấn đề mà cái như mà mà có tội á rồi cái như mình đề không đó. Chắc mình mấy cái mistake cái đó đó. Ok, nhưng mà anh có biết là anh tại sao nó lấy cái gì phải không? Tại vì anh có làm cái gì đó phải không? Đúng rồi, thì mình có tội mà. Ờ uh hả, -huh. ok. Ok, the respondent stating that uh, uh, when he, uh, he filed the application, applied for the application and when uh, when at the the questions that uh, if, if he's convicted and he say no, so he say that's a problem, but he, he He acknowledged that he had an issue, you know, and uh, you know he he did something wrong. Okay. He admitted. Okay. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions? No. Did we go anywhere with this? No, no, no. no just, we're here and waiting to see if the PFD, which is the PFD for the verification. Do you have any questions for Mr. Pham or uh, Mr. Gong? No, sir. Okay. Commissioner, do you have any questions at all? Or Mr. No, I got Mr. Dunk. All right. I'll entertain a motion. Yes, sir. Uh, Commissioner Dr. Kallis, uh making a motion to accept the PD, PD, uh, PFD as written and use our electronic signatures. There's second. Commissioner, Commissioner Callier, seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Fam, thank you again for the quick uh, response. Can you explain? I, uh, we're going to hold Mr. Dong on the line and we'll explain to him what his next steps are. And I appreciate your efforts tremendously. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, Tam. All right. Um, we are going to go to contested. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Apologize for that. We're going to go for motions for a hearing. I'm K. Okay. And that's Mr. Jennings. Uh, yes, sir. Um, good there you are. chairman and commissioners. My name is Doug Jennings. I'm an assistant general counsel for the department. Um, this matter before you was presented to the commission at a, as a contested case at the October 5th meeting. Um, after that meeting, the commission ruled to assess administrative penalties against the respondent in the amount of $15,000 and also to revoke the respondent's massage therapist license. The penalties and the revocation were in response to the commission finding that the respondent inappropriately touched the genitals of a client and made sexual overtures to two other clients. Uh, before I get started on the merits of the motion for rehearing, I would like to ask uh, both the commission and uh, respondent and counsel uh, not to mention the names of the victims. Um, and this is specifically for respondent. The commissioners have looked at the materials in the contested case. They're aware of the identities of the, uh, of the victims. Um, and so we would just ask that you respect their privacy as, as will I, by not mentioning their names. Um, okay, Mr. Jennings, Mr. Jennings, give me one second, Tam. We have some, is, is he not in the room yet? No. Okay, Mr. Jennings, can you hold on? Mr. Gonzalez is in the room yet. Just give me a second. Oh, yes, okay. sir. Thank you. I thought I saw him on there, but I guess I didn't. Um, right. Uh, is, uh, is there an attorney for Mr. Gonzalez? It's attorney Gonzalez. I'm sorry. It's attorney Gonzalez. It's His attorney's name is Gonzalez too. Yes. Okay. Oh, well, that makes attorney sense. Attorney Cristobal is in the room. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gonzalez, Mr. Gonzalez uh, counsel, can you hear? Can you hear me? Ms. Gonzalez. Pardon? 
Mr. Miss Mr. Miss Miss Gonzalez, can you hear me? This is Miss Gonzalez. Okay, and, he, and the attorney's name is Mr. Gonzalez, or the attorney is Miss Gonzalez. Miss Gonzalez. One is Mr. Gonzalez. Yes. Mr. Gonzalez. Uh, counselor, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you can you hear me? My name is Yolanda Gonzalez. G -O -G -A -L -E -S, Yolanda Gonzalez. Uh, with an F at the end. My client okay. is Cristobal Gonzalez. G O N Z A L E Z. Got it. Okay. Mr. G Mrs. Gonzalez with an S. Mrs. I'm going to refer to you as counselor, if you don't mind, so that we don't go back and forth like this, if yes. you don't mind. I'm going to refer to you as counselor. So, counselor. No, no, no. That, is, that is fine. You can refer okay. me. You can refer your to me client, anyway. Okay. Your client can hear me. Can you can, can, can he not? Yes. yes okay, good. With me. Okay. Stand by. I'm going to read something to you, then I'm going to let Mr. Okay. Jennings proceed, okay? So, just stand by. Yes, sir. If anyone has indicated that they are preparing to hear the motion for hearing, staff has provided them with information on how to connect. This meeting will bring them into the meeting and then we'll announce this case. We'll hear from general counsel first and then you, Ms. M Counselor, will have an opportunity to speak. Make sure you speak clearly and say your name and, when you re and who you represent. This is a motion for rehearing, which means that there have already been decisions made in your case, but we are not here today to re-argue the case. It's an opportunity for you to tell us how we made an error in entering the decision against you. That's an important sentence, Mr. Uh, Counselor. You'll be limited to speak about these issues that you've raised in your motion for rehearing. The assistant general counsel and you will have each have five minutes to speak, and you'll have a three minute rebuttal if needed. You understand me, Counselor? Yes, sir. Yes. Perfect. Mr. Jennings, you have the floor. Thank you, Chairman Figueroa. And again, uh, good morning, commissioners. My name is Doug Jennings. I am an assistant general counsel with the department. Uh, the matter before you was presented to the commission as a contested case at the October 5th meeting. After that meeting, the commission uh, entered an order to assess administrative penalties against the respondent in the amount of $15,000 and to revoke his massage therapist license. The penalties and the revocation were in response to the commission finding that the respondent inappropriately touched the genitals of one client and made sexual overtures to two other clients. Um, and because I'm, I, I believe that respondent and, and his counsel did not hear this during my first presentation, um, I would like to ask both the commission and the respondent and his counsel uh, not to mention the names of victims. Um, the commissioners are, they have the case materials before them and they can immediately discern which, uh, if, if this comes up, which of the alleged victims uh, is is being discussed, and so we just ask that you keep their identities confidential during this open meeting. Um, I will move on to my discussion of the motion for rehearing now. Um, the respondent's motion for rehearing claims that there was insufficient proof supporting the allegations against him. He also alleges that the administrative law judge or the ALJ erred in allowing the introduction of screenshots purportedly showing a text conversation between him and one of the complainants. Uh, just to fill you in on background, all three complainants testified at the hearing and were questioned extensively both by department staff and by the respondent. The ALJ's proposal for decision states that he found the complainants credible to varying degrees, of course, uh, but credible nonetheless, and found respondent to have a propensity to concoct elaborate tales. Further, the ALJ found no persuasive evidence supporting respondent's theory that the complainants had conspired against him. Considering all of the facts and evidence before him, the ALJ found, the, found that the preponderance of the evidence supported the allegations against the respondent. Additionally, the ALJ took the proper steps in handling the respondent's objection to the introduction of these purported screenshots of a text message conversation between respondent and one of the complainants. Uh, the ALJ followed the proper framework of the rules 106 and 107 of the Texas Rules of Evidence, allowing the respondent to testify and offer evidence in support of his theory that the screenshot represented only a portion of a longer conversation. And since this may <clears throat> be discussed further, I'll just give you some background. There was a, a screenshot introduced into evidence. Um, the respondent uh, alleged that, uh, that, that the one screen of, uh, of the conversation did not sufficiently reflect the entirety of the conversation, at which point the ALJ allowed the respondent to offer testimony and other documentary, documentary evidence um, to show the entire conversation, of course, uh, the respondent could not produce the entire conversation, but did give testimony about its content nonetheless. 
Um, in summary, uh, we found that there was a preponderance, preponderance of the evidence supporting the ALJ's conclusion that these, uh, that these acts were in fact committed and that the ALJ took the proper steps in evaluating and admitting the evidence and did not abuse uh, his discretion in doing so. And therefore, we would recommend denying this motion. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Jennings? Okay, Councilor. Just stand by. I'm going to give you something to make sure you understand, please. Uh, this motion for a hearing means that there's already been a decision made in your case. It's an opportunity for you to tell us how we erred in entering a decision against you. Again, I'm going to limit you to five minutes. Uh, Councilor, you, you have the floor. State yes, your name sir. and who you represent, please. My name is Yolanda Gonzalez, G O N D A N E S, and I represent. Cristobal Gonzalez, G O N D A L E Z. May I proceed, Your Honor? Yes, go ahead. Do you need, do you need my bar number? No, no. Okay. Uh, first of all, the staff did not meet its burden uh, by a preponderance of the evidence because there is no evidence. And I think that the uh, decision of the commission was an error. Uh, because there is no evidence to support the allegation of these women. And I also uh, believe that the uh, admitting part of the uh, text message when the entire text message was not presented is inadmissible, Your Honor. Uh, the uh, alleged uh, claimant admitted that there was more to the text messages, but she said that her phone book and because of that, then the incomplete message should not have been admitted as evidence, and that there is no other evidence to support any of these allegations. Also, I requested the decision of the commission be overturned because of prosecutorial misconduct on behalf of Christian. I'm sorry, Commissioner Chairman, that was not raised in the motion for rehearing and is not properly before the commission. Okay, Councilor, I, I, I got to tell you again, you cannot enter anything that wasn't said in the SOA hearing. So you've got to contain your remarks okay. to that, please. Okay. Then um, I, I feel that, uh, my client and I feel that the commission did not meet its burden of proof because there is no evidence to support the allegations of these women and that the decision of the commission should be overturned in favor of my client. Okay. Thank you, in Councilor. The uh, in, the, in the alternative, we would agree to a no hearing. I'm sorry, say that again. In the alternative, we would we would agree to another hearing where we can properly cross-examine the uh, the three witnesses. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any any further comment, Councilor? Any further comment? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Uh, Commissioner, Chairman Figueroa, if I may just offer a brief rebuttal. Yes, go ahead. Thank you. Uh, I would just like to, to add that there was absolutely, uh, there was absolutely uh, sufficient evidence to uphold the ALJ's finding. Uh, we, we had documentary evidence as well as uh, testimonial evidence offered by the three complainants. Um, and uh, just addressing the evidentiary issue, the judge did handle that framework, uh, that analysis properly. Um, the uh, the rules uh, that respondents council is is referring to are not rules of exclusion, but rather rules of admission. Um, and the ALJ did give the respondent every opportunity to provide evidence, uh, both testimonial and documentary, to round out the picture of what the uh, the the screenshot that was in question uh, constituted. So thank you. Yes, and, and my rebuttal to that, Your Honor, is that one of the claimants took her complaint to the police and they found her not credible at all. This is outside the record. Counselor, counselor, again, okay. I, I, you got to stay within the, the, the stat, uh, so here. It's, I understand you want to yes. add uh, evidence, but we understand that, but you got to okay. stay within the so here. Yes. And again, okay. uh, I do not, I do not believe, we do not believe that the person approved uh, by a preponderance of the evidence is there to support the decision of the commission. Okay. Thank you, Councilor. Commissioners. Thank you. Any comments or questions? Okay. I'll take a motion. Uh, oh, Commissioner. 
Go ahead, Commissioner. Yeah, Commissioner Callier, uh, I guess just one question, Doug. We we heard this uh, in October. Just remind me again. Yes, Commissioner Callier. Yes. Okay, thank you, uh, Commissioner Callier. Um, I, I I'm I'm not getting the the basis for you know for us looking at this again. Um, so uh, it's, it's to uh, deny. Are you making a motion to, to deny motion? That, that's hearing? that's a motion to deny. <laughs> okay. Is there a second? Second. 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 All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. A uh, counselor, um, you will, the staff will get with you as far as what your next possible steps could be. So, uh, thank you for your time. Thank you, commissioners. Thank okay. You. Thank you, Mr. Jennings. All right. Thank you, Doug. So, <clears throat> excuse me. We're going to go to rules and uh, go to item L. And uh, Molly, where are you at? There you are. All right. Can you speak up? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. All right. You have the floor. Okay. Item uh, I or L. Sorry, item L on the rules, please. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Molly Fudel here, Assistant General Counsel here at TDLR. And I'm going to be presenting the massage therapy rules for you. Uh, these rules implement two bills from the last legislative session, most notably SB 1130, which allows distance learning for certain subjects in the massage school curriculum. Um, our goal with these rules is to, is to ensure that students receive adequate instruction while also allowing schools and students the flexibility that was envisioned with this bill. And we use the federal rules as a model since the Department of Education has been involved with distance learning for quite some time. These rules were published in the Texas Register on August 20th. We received 17 comments and we looked at the comments and we recommended some changes based on them. Um, these changes provide more detail on what's required if a school chooses to offer distance learning, because of course that's an option that's not required. And uh, we're also recommending a change to make one of the requirements less stringent than we had originally published. So I've talked about distance learning, but I also want to mention that these rules include changes in response to violence and other misconduct towards um, such therapists. And these changes were recommended by a work group of the Massage Therapy Advisory Board. The Advisory Board as a whole met on October 18th, and they recommended adopting these rules, including the distance learning rules, with the changes that I just outlined. Staff also recommends adopting the rules with an effective date of January 1st, 2022. And I'm here for any questions that you might have. Good. Any questions? You're going to take a motion? Uh, just, uh, thank you, Molly. Uh, this is Commissioner Callier. Um, so the the change language um, for pertaining to the distance learning, because I noticed that uh, a lot of the comments that came in was tied tied to I believe fraud might have been some of the concerns tied to distance learning. So um, uh, so so confident that we've uh, we've addressed that clearly. Yes. yes, we are. We have requirements in there too accurately track hours to properly identify the student and make sure that they participate. Okay, all righty. And, and the, uh, the board was in agreement to that change language too. Thank yes. you. Mm -hmm. And then you, you made a statement about um, one being less stringent. If you can uh, go into a little bit more detail with that one. Sure, so that was a requirement for schools that have already been approved for distance learning to uh, get additional approval if they want to change the method of delivery for that distance learning or expand their course offerings. And we're changing that so that they don't have to get approval beforehand. They'll just notify us afterwards if they want to make that change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and so what's the time period in which they notify afterwards? We don't have that uh, specifically, but it's a reasonable time, a reasonable amount of time. Okay. And what's reasonable? Just forgive me. I just had to ask that question. What's reasonable? So that's very dependent on the circumstances. That's something that lawyers are pretty can pretty um, comfortable with. Uh, it takes into account a bunch of different factors. Um, a lot of times, you know, thinking about things like the winter storm, what was reasonable then is not necessarily reasonable at other times. Um, so we're leaving it kind of open to allow that flexibility.
All right, any further questions? All right, entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve the rules. Is there a second? Aye. Second. All in favor, say aye. Um, I, you know, noting with the January 1st, 2022, aye. All opposed? All right. Motion carries. Thank you, Molly. Appreciate that. Wendy, are you on my mic? Yes, I am. There you are. All right, Ms. Pella, go ahead. The item M. Good morning, Wendy. Go ahead. Thank you. Good morning, Wendy Pello, Senior Assistant General Counsel for TDLR. Agenda item M are the proposed amendments to 16 Texas Administrative Code Chapter 111 regarding the speech language pathologist and audiologist program. These are uh, comprehensive telehealth proposed rules that are in front of you today. They include four categories of changes. They are implementing the telehealth emergency rules on a permanent basis. They're implementing Senate Bill 40 from the 87th regular legislature regular session, and that's the telehealth bill that um, affected TDLR's health-related um, health programs. Um, they're including changes as a result of the four-year rule review related to telehealth and telesupervision, and then they make um, fourth categories reorganization and eliminating um, duplicate type provisions. Um, the proposed rules were published in the Texas Register on September 10th for um, open for public comment, and that public comment period closed October 11th, 2021. The department received three comments during that time period, two in support, one was suggesting a change. The department did not make any changes in response to those public comments. Um, the speech language pathologist and audiologist advisory board met on November 2nd to discuss the proposed rules in the public comments. And the advisory board recommended that the commission adopt the proposed rules as published. The department is also recommending that the commission adopt the proposed rules as published, but with an effective date of December 30th, 2021. Usually we have our rules effective on the 1st or the 15th of the month. In this case, we're asking for an effective date of December 30th, 2021. And that is because the telehealth emergency rules that the commission previously adopted will expire on December 29th, 2021. So for the rule package you have before you, we're asking for an effective date of December 30th, 2021. Happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Wendy. Any questions? Um, so move. No, no. <laughs> so move was December 30th, 2021 motion. Our council. Well, I, was, I wasn't going to spend too much time. She's hit the nail on the head. Absolutely. Health is something that is expiring based on the governor's emergency order. Uh, in order for us to maintain uh, the, the future, uh, thank you for your uh, explanation. But that's how health care is going to be delivered. And everyone should be included under that umbrella, not just uh, doctors, nurses, uh, every every single uh, licensed professional uh, should allow Texans to be seen via telehealth and get paid for it. So, you, Com Callis, yeah, Commissioner Cowan, your seconds. And um, I was going to say that uh, I think this is a win as well for the telehealth uh, component. So I appreciate that. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, motion carries. All right, Wendy, item N. Again, Wendy Pello, uh, Senior Assistant General Counsel for TDLR. Agenda item N is the proposed rules under 16 Texas Administrative Code Chapter 112 for the Hearing Instrument Fitters and Dispenser Program. Again, these are comprehensive telehealth rules. Uh, these proposed rules are also make four categories of changes. They too also implement the telehealth emergency rules on a permanent basis for this program. They implement Senate Bill 40. Um, they include changes as a result of the four year rule, re rule review related to telehealth. And again, they also make re uh, reorganization changes. Uh, the proposed rules were published in the Texas Register on September 10th for open for public comment. And the public comment period closed October 11th, 2021. The department did not receive any public comments in response to the proposed rules. The Hearing Incident Fitters and Dispensers Advisory Board met on November 9th, 2021 to discuss the proposed rules. And the advisory board recommended that the commission adopt the proposed rules as published. And again, the department is recommending that the commission adopt the proposed rules as published. And again, in this case, with a December 30th, 2021 um, effective date in that it um, is because the emergency rules, the emergency telehealth rules for this program expire on December 29th, 2021. So for the rules in front of you today, we're asking for um, adoption with an effective date of December 30th, 2021. 
and I can answer any questions. Motion. So moved uh, with the effective date of 1230-2021. This is Commissioner Callier. All right. Second, Second Commissioner Callier. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, mission carries, Wendy. Okay, agenda item O, again, Wendy Pello from TDLR. Um, this is, these proposed rules is an, a proposed amendment to an existing rule under 16 Texas Administrative Code Chapter 16. Those are the procedural rules of the commission and the department. And the specific change is being made to rule 60.24, which is a rule about the advisory boards. And the proposed rules are uh, making it up, are updating the list of the department's advisory boards and their abolishment dates as required by Texas Government Code Chapter 2110. Uh, the proposed rules were published in the Texas Register, open for public comment on October 1st, 2021, and the public comment period closed November 1st, 2021. Um, we received one comment during the public comment period, and the department did not make any changes in response to that comment. Um, there isn't an advisory board for uh, Chapter 60 rules, and so the department is requesting that the commission adopt the proposed rules um, for 60.24. And then in this case, with an effective date of January 1st, 2022. Thank you, Thank Wendy. You. Any questions or comments? Make a motion. I make a motion to adopt the proposed rules. Uh, January, what was the date? January, January 1st, 2022. 1st, 2022. 2022. Second. Commissioner Callier. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item P, Wendy, or Derek, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you, Wendy. Sorry about that. Good morning, commissioners. My name is Derek Burkhalter. I'm an assistant general counsel with TDLR. Uh, today's agenda item is uh, proposed changes to the midwives rules in chapter 115 of the Texas Administrative Code. Um, so these proposed rules um, add specific fetal heart rate conditions to the list of conditions during labor or delivery that require a midwife to initiate immediate emergency transfer of a client to a physician. The proposed rules say that um, in detecting those fetal heart rates, midwives should use the standards or the recommendations of the American College of Nurse Midwives. Um, and the rules require that each midwife upon renewal complete two, two hours of continuing education covering the topic of assessing fetal heart rates. Uh, additionally, the rules create an audit system for reporting completion of continuing education for license renewal and make other cleanup changes. Uh, these rules were published in the Texas Register on September 17th. The, the public peri uh, comment period closed October 18th. The department received a comment, comments from one interested party during that period. Um, the Midwives Advisory Board met on November 8th to discuss the proposed rules and the public comments. The Advisory Board recommended adopting the proposed rules as published without changes, and the department makes the same recommendation um, for an effective date of January 1st, 2022. And I would also like to thank Commissioner Callier and Callitz um, for your collaboration with the standard of care work group to make sure we got these rules right. Uh, and with that, I am available for any questions. Thank you, Derek. Uh, any comments? Mr. Chairman, yes. Brian Francis. I'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Callis, Commissioner Callis uh, and Callier for their, their hard work on it. Also today present with us is the, uh, the chair of the advisory board, Lori Frenzy. Uh, who also worked diligently and hard. And again, her presence here just shows uh, her commitment to the program, but also to the wellness and well being of the, the mothers and the newborns. So, Lori, thank you so much for being here. And thanks for all the hard work. Thank you, Lori. Thank you. Any other comments? I had a comment. I want to personally thank Commissioner Callier and uh, definitely uh, Mr. Burkhalter and the whole uh, advisory board. I will tell you that this is something that uh, I take uh, very seriously as a physician leading the state of Texas, that we were able to make sure that our babies, unborn children are safer today than they will be uh, yesterday. Um, I think that there was a lot of uh, collaboration and I feel that once we all got on the same page, it's all about communication. Uh, communication is key to getting things moving and TDLR took that uh, bull by the horns and uh, thank you, Commissioner Callier, and thank you uh, uh, your hard work, uh, Mr. Burke Holter. Thank you.
Mr. Chair, this is uh, Commissioner Callier. Um, you know, right on for the comments of uh, collaboration, uh, very important, and I believe that speaks to the heart of uh, of the of the agency with the staff and, of course, the commissioners as well. Uh, appreciate uh, Lori's, um, uh, you know, as the chair of the midwives, uh, uh, you know, board for for her efforts and and the other members who were part of the committee. Uh, it's the right focus, right? It's the right focus on. On, uh, on, for, for parents, for, for, for mothers, and for the babies and the newborn. So, so I appreciate uh, everything that's been done. Thank you. Lori, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming up. I remember the first case we heard. Yes. Well, the first cases that came on in front of me as I jumped on this commission. So, uh, whatever you need from us. Yeah. I thank Dr. Kaus, Mr. Kyer, for what you do. I'll take a motion. So moved. Second, Commissioner Callier. Second, highly appropriate. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right. Item Q. Molly, you're back. I am. Thank you nice, so much. Nice view behind you. I got to give that to Molly. Like the view. Thank you. It's beautiful. All right. Good morning. Molly Fudel, Assistant General Counsel here again. And I'm going to be talking about the cosmetology rules. Um, these are the first rules that we're going to be presenting to you that will implement HB 1560, which is TDLR's sunset bill, as you know. Um, this bill did a bunch of things. It combined the barbering and cosmetology programs here at TDLR, and it also discontinu discontinued the instructor license. So as of September 1st of this year, an instructor license is no longer required to teach at a barbering or cosmetology school. And at some point in the coming months, uh, the instructors are going to be transferred to a practitioner license. So, for example, a cosmetology instructor is going to be issued a cosmetology operator license. And a barbering instructor is going to be issued a class A barber license. So, in the meantime, we are reducing the license renewal fees for instructors to match the renewal fee for the license that they're ultimately going to be issued. That way, they're not having to pay new until they get this new license. In addition to that, this rule package um, removes references to WIG specialty certificates as those licenses were deregulated under HB 1560. The rules were published in the Texas Register on October 8th. We received nine comments. All of them were outside, outside the scope of the proposed rules. Uh, the department recommends adopting the rules as published with an effective date of January 1st. I'm here for any questions you might have. This is uh, Commissioner Callier. Uh, Molly, is there, uh, just to confirm, is there a reduction in the, the license fee? Yes, there is. It does reduce the license fee. So what, what's the new fee? Do you know? So for instructors, it was $60 and it's now going to be $50. Okay. All right, thank you. I, I, I definitely uh, received uh, quite a few phone calls um you know as this was going on through so another concern is there so uh, i want to make sure uh make sure brian that uh that that you know whatever we need to do to communicate um any follow-up communications as to what's transpiring here because this one did touch um a few of the licensees that uh, with the instructor's license yes ma'am we'll do that okay a any other comments All right, I'll take a motion. Um, so, so moved, uh, Commissioner Callier. Uh, effective date of it was it January 1, 2022. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Item R, Molly. Thank you. Good morning, Molly Fudel, Assistant General Counsel. I'm going to be presenting the Barber rules. Uh, these rules are just like the cosmetology rules. They reduce the license renewal fees for instructors. And um, Commissioner Tellier, they reduce the renewal uh, fee for the barber instructor from $65 to $55. And for specialty instructors, it'll be reduced from $65 to $30. Uh, these rules were also uh, published on October 8th. We received three comments. And again, all of the comments were outside the scope of the proposed rules. The department recommends adopting the rules as published with an effective date of January 1st. And I'm here for any questions. Any comments? I'll tear and chain a motion. 
So move uh, to adopt the rules as uh, as read with effective date of January 1st, 2022. Commissioner Callier. Second. So moved. All in favor say aye. Opposed? All right, motion carries. Uh, Tim, we've got till 11, correct? And we're going to add on. Is that accurate? I'll go to Mary on appointments. That should fill up the next few minutes. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. All right, Mary, are you out there? Yes, sir, I'm here. All right, well, there you are. Great to I'm see here. you, Mary. Okay, great to see you. Sorry I couldn't be there today. Um, no, not okay. to waste time. We're going to go to item S. We'll make sure item S. Hey, and real quick, commissioners, um, there's a lot of changes going on in regards to advisory committees. And as you've seen in the midwives, these are our eyes and ears. I, I challenge anybody to know as much as we could about 40 plus licenses that we have to regulate. So I, I any names that you could give us any support to give Mary would be greatly appreciated. Uh, and Mary, thank you for the effort that you've done and, and the amazing job that you always constantly do and how you, you vet and give us the right people. So thank you. Go ahead. Oh, thank you so much, Chairman. We have a great team and thank you for, for being there for us. Good morning, everyone. Mary Winston, TDLR. Today, I'm going to be presenting for commission approval, uh, the chairman's recommendations for appointment for the following boards. Thank you, Christine Reif, for running this PowerPoint. For the new Barber and Cosmetology Advisory Board, we have Mary Pascal Lindsay from Houston, Texas. Uh, LaDietrich Leonard from Austin, Texas. Salvador Flores McAllen. Ron Jemison, Houston. Natalie Enderman from Lubbock. Naylan Holman from Frisco. Darren Peterson of Austin, Texas. Laura Valdez from Copeland. Aurora Farthing, also from Lubbock. For the next board, uh, actually committee, Driver Training and Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, first we have Carlos Reyna from Corpus Christi, Nina Jo Saint from Houston, James Hiller, Austin, David Bruce, Houston, Matthew White from San Antonio. Rudolfo Rudy Martinez from Katy. Elizabeth Madden from Grand Prairie, Prairie, Texas. And Mary Lloyd of Austin, Texas. Anna Freeman, Fort Hood, Texas. For our next advisory board, Motor Fuel Metering and Quality Advisory Board, appointees are Jason Harris, Lake Jackson, Carlos A. Garza, Edinburgh, Terry Hara, Temple, Texas, Seth Stevens, Floyd Ida, Wes Nance, San Antonio, Texas, Adam Thompson, Watauga, Texas. Terry Maxey of Uvalde. Keisha Escada, Wichita, Kansas. Nathan Winkleman, Brenham, Texas. Our ex officio member for the same advisory board, Stephen Skurlock of Austin, Texas. Ex officio member, Jeff Headley from Houston, Texas. For reappointment, we have from an existing board, we have Mr. John Sparrow for Electrical Safety and Licensing Advisory Board and Mr. Sparrow's from Austin, Texas. For presiding officer appointments, we have for Barbering Cosmetology Advisory Board, Ms. Mary Pascoe Lindsay of Houston, Texas. For Driver Training and Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, Mr. Carlos Reyna from Corpus Christi, Texas. And for the Motor Fuel Metering and Quality Advisory Board, Mr. Jason Harris from Lake Jackson, Texas. 
right. and that is the completion of our list for presentation today, Chairman. Mary, again, thank you. Commissioners, when I look at these lists, I'm looking at geographic diversity, looking at diversity of thought, diversity. So I need your help on this. So anything you can add is use it would always be appreciated, Mary. Uh, you, you did a great job again. Tell you thank you so much. So uh, honor can a motion. As Commissioner Callier, I move that we accept the appointments as uh, as presented. Second. I'll second. Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Motion carries. Wendy, thank you. Mary. I mean, with Mary. Sorry, Mary. Thank you. It's been a long day. <laughs> I got Gonzalez. I got all kinds of things happen. Vietnamese. I got all stuff running on in my head here, Brian. It's all good, Mr. Chairman. All right. We are ready for the. Uh, presentation perfect uh all right so uh is, is tara blankley's family online we're getting them in now okay commissioner callis can you hear me i sure can okay listen contrary to my 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 recommendation which i i didn't want to give you there's a certificate we wanted to issue to you uh on veterans day It'll cost you dinner and a beer for you to receive this, but uh, I'd love to present this to you when you get a chance. And we appreciate your service. Uh, we know it's caused loss of hair, so we, we appreciate that immensely. But uh, thank you for what you did, and uh, I'll be expecting that phone call for dinner and a beer for so I'll present this to you, sir. So thank thank you. you very much, and thank you, TDLR, for respecting all veterans throughout the U.S. And by the way, they did an amazing job. Who, who was in charge of that? It was a lot of folks, but you know, I've got to put the- You just watch? She, a lot of it on Tamla's shoulders. You know, Tam? She pulls together and does a great job of, of great honoring job. our folks. Outstanding job, Cam. Thank you Thank so much. Thank you. You did the impossible. And what is that, Tam? You made Brian look good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's gonna, gonna be grief. There's like a 60 day grieving period. Oh. All right. Uh, I can't hear you. What are their names? Uh, the Blankley family, Cynthia oh. Blankley, okay. Miranda Blankley, and Lydia Howie. Miranda, uh, can you all hear me? The Blankley family, can you hear me? Good. All right. Thank you so much for your time. I'm going to read something and I'm going to make some comments. Uh, can I tell you how our prayers are with you and your family? And we just pray for comfort. So uh, let me read this for you if you don't mind. Tara Blankley was a mother, a sister, a daughter, a student, a friend, and so much more to those who knew her. She was also a warrior, fighting the obstacles that stood in the way of an education and a good life for her and her son. Sadly, Although she tried her hardest, she was unable to vanquish her biggest foe, cancer. Tara had big goals for herself and her son. She was, was well on her way of achieving her goal of becoming an esthetician when she passed away. She had more than 700 of the 800 hours required for obtaining the license. We, as the Department of License and Regulation, want to honor and recognize Tara Blankley for her accomplishments and we proudly bestow upon this honorary license to her. I cannot tell you what a big honor it is for me to read this to you on behalf of the TDLR. Again, my prayers for comfort for your family and to know that she's not forgotten. And we appreciate the time that you're giving us today. Is there any comments that you guys would like to make? Can they hear me, Tam? Uh, for the family. Lydia, is that you? Yes. Um, I oh. don't know if uh, Miranda was speaking. I think she might be a little away from the computer. Miss Miranda, did you want to make some comments? They're muted. They're yeah. muted. Can you hear me now? 
Yeah, Miranda, go ahead. And and okay. again, you have the floor. Thank you. Go ahead. I wanted to thank you on behalf of my family, you know, especially to be able to do this for my sister. Um, you know, she never gave up. You know, there were times where it got really hard for her to continue the program and she kept she kept going, you know, she did it while she was going through therapy. There were times where she was in the hospital and she still continued to, you know, keep up with the program and try and finish uh, so that she had something to show for herself and for her son. Um, so we wanted to thank you so much for being able to uh, get her certification, um, you know, to be able to, I guess, reward her for all the hard work that she she did. So thank would you. Would you uh, Would you mind if I said a prayer for you guys? Would that is that possible? Yes. You can. Sure. Yes. Bella. Father God, thank you for this day. Sometimes in our days we get uh, distracted, we get busy, but we may never forget that uh, these days are consumed with relationships, with people, not regulations, not licenses, but people. So Father, we ask your blessing on the Blankwood family, that you uh, give them comfort, you give them peace. Father, you protect that son of, of hers, that you guide him and protect him. And we just ask that uh, you continue to grow us, even through the tough times, through the hard times, each and every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you as well. God bless you. Thank you. And if I may say a few words. Sure. All right. Thank you. Uh, so this is Lydia Hanawi. I'm the academic director of the cosmetology program at Palo Alto College. And I just want to acknowledge TDLR and all its representatives here today for what you have done for our student, uh, Tara. So on behalf of um, our program, my colleagues, the students of the Cosmetology Aesthetics Program, and on behalf of our administration, they're very well aware that this was occurring today. Uh, we want to thank TDLR and we want to convey to the Blanquis family that they are, have been since the passing of Tara, they have been in our warmest thoughts and uh, for her son, Logan. And we just want to tell you that um, TDLR, that Tara was a student with a lot of courage, uh, tenacious, she had a lot of inner strength. I personally interviewed her as she was uh, applying for our program and she shared with me what was going on. And she, even though I asked her, are you sure you want to do this at this time? Her answer was a strong yes. Uh, she was passionate about wanting to become an esthetician. And um, we know that this was her lifelong dream. And so with the honorary certificate that we just found out you will send to our school, uh, we want to share with you that uh, that honorary certificate will forever hang uh, be on the walls of our aesthetics lab so that she can be an inspiration to future students that we have on our program. Um, and we will share the story of Tara and uh, share that despite the challenges that life's, life brings, um, that you can stay focused on, on your goals and, and your dreams. So again, we wanna thank you TDLR for this acknowledgement and thank you for all that you have done for Tara. Lydia, thank you. Thank you so much for your comments. Yeah. God bless, thank you, Blake. Thank you. Okay. Um, Mr. Francis, I think we're going to go on to uh, item U, staff report, please. Absolutely, Mr. Chairman. I was going to check with uh, Tamla and the team to make sure uh, that we're okay in terms of public comment. 
we had no public commenters confirmed. We did send the invite out, but I don't have anyone waiting. Okay. So I'm going to assume we have no public comment. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mr. Chairman, uh, Brian Francis, Executive Director with TDLR, it's really good to be here. That, that presentation to that beautiful family was amazing. Um, one of the things that the team had shared with me is that, that Tara was able to earn a two-year scholarship for her six-year-old son, Logan, at Alamo College. So, uh, I mean, she's given to him that gift of education and courage and inspiration, and, and it really... Um, it really makes me proud that we're able to do these things as an agency. Uh, it shows our heart uh, for folks, and, and I think that's something that really defines TDLR. Uh, I'd like to start with, with uh, Deputy Executive Director Mike Harris Mendez to give just a brief overview on the Veteran Committee uh, meeting and the Veterans Day program that we have, Mike. Thank you. Uh, Chairman, Commissioner Mike Harris Mendez, Deputy Executive Director. Uh, for Veterans Day, actually, uh, we were off on Veterans Day, but the day before we held a veteran ceremony honoring the veterans that we have here at the agency. We're proud to report that we have an extremely high number of uh, veterans that work for the agency, <clears throat> one of the uh, highest in the state of Texas for state agencies. Uh, we've worked really hard to kind of maintain that level and to continue to seek out veterans to come and work here at the agency. So I uh, had a great turnout, had a great speaker. They came in that was a former honor guard at the Tomb of the Elm Soldier, uh, provide a lot of great information. So it was really good to be here for that. So uh, we do want to recognize, of course, Dr. Callis for his service as well in, uh, as a veteran to uh, this a great country. So uh, just want you to know that we'll continue to work hard and work towards uh, increasing our numbers in veteran services. The uh, target for all state agencies is 20% of our employment. So we still have ways to go, but we're definitely uh, working hard to get there. Mike, thank you very much. Mike, could you also do a quick introduction of uh, uh, your new, one of your newest members to your team, and then we'll have David segue to a very high-level discussion on uh, Texas licensing. So I'll start off at a low level with my CIO. <laughs> uh, I want to let you know that uh, I want to introduce to you John Fowler, uh, who's our new Chief Information Officer. John started with us October 15th, came with us uh, from the Texas Workforce Commission. He was there for about 17 years, did a lot of work uh, at, TW, at the Texas Workforce Commission. Uh, one of his uh, high level notable things that I can talk about is that during the COVID period, when all of the unemployment payments were being paid out, John was instrumental, was probably the uh, key developer <clears throat> for the Texas Workforce Commission that received or able to kick out, I'm trying to figure out how much you know. $55 billion in unemployment benefits went out during his time there in that COVID time. So $55 billion in the state of Texas, that's a lot that had to be done and a lot that he and his team did. <clears throat> We're fortunate to have him uh, as our new CIO. He's come in. Uh, we didn't actually let him kind of walk into the pool. We threw him in at the deep end, and he has been uh, managed to stay afloat and do a lot of uh, problems and issues that we've been dealing with here at the agency. Uh, from projects being behind to ensuring that we have our TLS system uh, where we need to be. So he's jumped in full force and taking control of that. And so I did want to be able to introduce to you and allow you to now meet our new Chief Information Officer, John Fowler. So I'll, I'll open it up in case he has anything he'd like to say to you. Uh, I, I'm just grateful to be here. I'll tell you, I'm amazed by this group of people. And Michael attests that uh, the first day he uh, I went through orientation. He immediately brought me over to the North Campus for some meetings in the afternoon. And uh, I told him, I said, man, I was just taken aback by how friendly everybody was here. Not that TWC wasn't friendly, but uh, it's so much larger, you just don't have that same feel. Uh, and in, in my interview, actually with Brian, Brian was there and I told him one of the reasons I showed up uh, was because of the way you guys presented yourself in your strategic plan. So um, I'm glad to be here and looking forward to doing great things for the agency. Mike, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. David, can you give us just a quick update on where we are on our journey? Yes, sir. Chairman Figueroa, Commissioners, David Gonzalez, Deputy Executive Director of Licensing Services. So, as you know, we're taking our lessons learned from our efforts with Red River on the Texas licensing system. We're going to do a reboot, and we've engaged with 
some experts in this field, research and advisory experts, Gartner Inc., which we have a relationship through our IT section already, to help us form a new statement of work and plan ahead. We do a lot of things well here at TDLR, and IT is one of those things that we could do well, but a new licensing system is something we've been wanting for years, and we've got some work to do there. And we're going to ask for help. We're going to get their help, and we're going to try to move quickly, as quickly as possible, to get a new statement of work out there and pursue what we've been dreaming about. I've been here 26 years. Years, and at least 20 of those years I've been looking for a new system. So I, I do in, intend on championing, championing um, this effort and making sure that we follow through on some progress there. Mr. Uh, the last thing I'll uh, report on, uh, I believe the commission is aware that uh, I'll be retiring at the end of January. And really? yes, sir. I, you and I talked about that. You were you're excited. <laughs> you may be uncomfortable. <laughs> um, yeah, so so I'm sure we'll have opportunities to talk about it you know, down the road, but uh, I love this agency, always will, um, and I'm going to leave it at that because there's this is a no-crying December, and so we don't cry in December. And that's all we have for Sacramento. Mr. Francis, I don't think you have a day you don't go crying, so I, I don't know if you hold the whole month. I'm not sure you can go the whole month. That's uh, true. But uh, yeah, so the commissioners, uh, so it's important to stay. We got a lot of changes going on, especially with the IT. You get a chance, holler to uh, David. Uh, make sure we 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 we're, we're on, we need to be on top of this new licensing system. So get debriefed individually as you can. I highly recommend it. Um, we got as, as Brian has alluded to. We've got big changes coming up uh, with this this uh, commission. Uh, we need to uh, make sure address it. Uh, be looking for our next meeting. I'll probably call a special meeting. Uh, sometime early on in the year next year, and um, we are going to try as hard as we can to quell this technology maze, labyrinth, whatever it is we're in the middle of, and, and, and be as face to face as possible. So uh, stay tuned. We'll offer some dates to make sure you confirm those. Uh, any other comments from y'all? Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, just uh, fabulous uh, support by the staff today. So I appreciate everything. Absolutely. Tam, we'll get a meeting out within the next day or so. Yes, sir. Okay, we'll get probably give, give us an, give us the end of the week to get the meeting date for the next time. And I, I want to make sure you guys can be here on person. I want to see all bright and shiny faces in 3D. So uh, that'd be great. Uh, and then with, as well as special session. Anything else? Tam, did I cover everything or did I miss anything? No, sir. No, all right. Have a great Christmas. If I don't see you, God bless you guys and have a happy new year. And uh, thank you for what you guys do. Thank you for your effort. Thank you for your time this morning. Each and every one of you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Means adjourned.